Hi everyone and welcome to ClinSci Explained. Um, my name is Ian and I am a clinical psychologist in the UK. Uh, this video is a summary of what clinical psychology is and the types of things that clinical psychologists do. If you've watched some of my other videos you know that I just flash up this disclaimer for a while for you to read just about the content of the video really. I'll give you a bit of time to read over it and then once we're done with that we'll get on with the video proper. So if you do go on to the British Psychological Society website, you'd see that after you've done an undergraduate degree in psychology, there's lots of different areas that you can end up in. Uh, some people might end up going to occupational psychology, which is going into workplaces. Others might be in prisons doing forensic psychology. Some people might choose to do sports psychology, which is improving the performance of athletes. Clinical psychologists tend to work in hospital and community settings. Um, to improve um, the quality of life of people with physical and mental health difficulties. Although some psychologists can end up going into private practice, the majority of clinical psychologists end up working for the NHS. And when we think of the NHS, it, we, we think of doctors and nurses. Um, and clinical psychologists are actually a small workforce within the, the National um, Health Service. Um, we're clustered within other, um, other groups um, and tend to be called allied health professionals and we are regulated by the HCPC and you can actually go on this website um, which I'm just bringing up on the screen now um, to check to see if someone um, that you're seeing a psychologist is registered um, to call themselves a psychologist and this just protects the public. So clinical psychologists can work in lots and lots of different areas, um, maybe working um, with young people, working uh, with adults, maybe uh, people who have a learning disability, um, and maybe are based in hospital settings, community settings, lots of different areas. Um, but one thing that we have in common is we want to reduce people's psychological distress and improve their psychological well-being. Uh, within mental health settings, uh, clinical psychologists work with lots of other professionals um, who might be like family therapists, might be uh, mental health nurses, mental health practitioners, psychotherapists, psychiatrists. Uh, we all are trained in different ways and contribute different things to the lives of the clients that we work with. Um, the biggest comparison tends to be with psychiatrists um, and the biggest confusion tends to be with psychiatrists. Um, the, these colleagues are medically trained and so are different from psychologists and their principal role is to manage complex cases um, and to help them prescribe medication if that's useful. Um, psychologists um, work alongside them and they tend to be the leaders in offering um, talking therapies and sometimes the two working together um, actually produces the best results um, according to the evidence base. So if medication is working alongside talking therapies then we might sort of see um, the biggest sort of improvement in someone's mental health and their well-being. Um, people might not always be aware that um, they're seeing a psychologist. They might just know that they're, they see Ian or they see a therapist or that they see their key worker um, and it doesn't really matter to them um, what their professional training um, has been. Um, but clinical psychologists differ from lots of other mental health professionals and in some of the other videos I'll go on to explain what the key differences are. You will have seen in one of the other slides uh, that clinical psychology aims to increase psychological well-being and reduce psychological distress. Um, we don't tend to use mental health or diagnostic labels all that much and definitely not in the description of what clinical psychology is um, because we maybe might not say that we can fix it or cure it because we realise that problems are maintained by lots of different factors and we try and understand all these factors um, under the label of formulations and formulations the way that I see them are maybe like complex jigsaws or mosaics of all the different factors that contribute to a problem 
and in one of the other videos um, I'll actually go into what formulations might look like on paper and how people can um, I suppose start to understand their problems and see a way out um, of the problems that they're experiencing. Because of the clinical training, which I'll explain in another video, um, clinical psychologists tend to have experience of lots of different therapeutic approaches like cognitive behavioural therapy or cognitive analytical therapy or solution focused therapy. And our job is to try and match the therapeutic technique to the problem um, that we're working with um, or the problem that the client is experiencing. Um, because of our training, um, because of the various things that we do, um, we tend to see the more complex cases within mental health settings as we tend to be seen as like the senior members of the team. Um, we also, behind the scenes, get involved with things like supervision of colleagues, consultation, which is um, providing advice um, to someone um, about a client that they might be working with. And we also kind of engage in, in training as well with colleagues. So that was a really, really quick overview of what clinical psychology is and does. Um, if you've watched my uh, introduction video, you'll know that I'm going to be creating lots of different videos to cover other aspects of, of the role. Um, this might be like therapeutic techniques or um, going to a first session or how to become a clinical psychologist. So hopefully one of those videos might be the, the next one that you'll watch. Um, if you've got any comments about this video or um, would like me to prepare a video that you don't see on the list, um, then please let me know in the comment section on YouTube or you can find me at Twitter, what is Quinsci, or you can send me an email and all the details will be um, at the end of this video. Okay, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in one of the other videos. All right, bye for now.